up, everybody? It's Isaac from Alchemy here, and this is episode 32 of the Alchemy Devlog. In this episode, I've got some cool new dice features to show off. We have a new dice roll builder in the dice tray, and we have some upgrades to our segmented dice pools that you all have seen in last episode. I think it was last episode. Um, we've also got a new game out on the marketplace, Coriolis. You can see that here on our homepage billboard. The Coriolis, the great dark Kickstarter just launched this week for those new books coming out uh, sometime next year. Um, and we've got Coriolis, the third horizon on our marketplace now. So you can check all of that out. Of course, I'm going to take some time to go through what the team's working on, what we're going to be building next. Uh, and go through the questions and answers that have been sent in since last time. So with that out of the way, let's dive in. First up, let's take a look at the new dice actions that we have here. So I'm going to jump into a 5e game. Um, this is also available in other systems, and I'll show you how that works here in a moment. Uh, but if you pop open the dice tray, uh, you'll notice that there's some new numbers up here. You can click these to add multiple dice into one single roll and send them all off at once. So we've got our 2d4, our d6, and our d8 in here all added together in a single roll. If you're building a roll and you realize, oh, I need to make a quick d20 roll, for example, or whatever, you can hold the shift key and that kind of reverts temporarily to um, being able to roll a single roll, including d20 with advantage. Um, or disadvantage, and release shift to go right back to building that pool, and you can add, you know, a d12 in there and get all those dice rolled at once. Uh, if you're building and you want to cancel out, you can click this cancel button at the bottom, that's new, or you can press the escape key, or you can even just click anywhere outside of here to dismiss it uh, and start all over. Nice upgrade to our little uh, dice tray to enable building those rolls on the fly. Probably not the most useful thing for a 5e game. I don't know, it might be. Um, but where it really comes in handy is in some other settings. So let's take a look at Coriolis as, an, as a quick example since it's new and fun. Um, we'll make a devlog32 Coriolis game. And jump in here and um, we now have just a d6 action here for our uh, let's go we'll template the icons this one's really cool the space station we should look at a few of these getting distracted now space combat uh, these are some of the alchemy enhanced um, assets for this space station let's go there whoa cool uh, so you have a d6 as your only die that you really need here. Maybe there's others. We'll, we'll get to those possibly if, if we get a lot of feedback for, for more dice in this tray here. Um, but this is now um, the number of dice that you want in your D6 dice pool using the same success and failure mechanics uh, that dice pools use in Coriolis. So if we wanted to roll like 3D6 in a dice pool on the fly, we can just throw it in like that and it'll count up the successes and failures using those custom Coriolis dice too. So another little twist there. Should have done a few more to make that more exciting. Let's go for 15, 16, why not? <laughs> um, and if you ever find that you added one too many, you can right click to remove all the way back down to zero. So lots of, uh, lots of options there for you to build all those pools uh, on the fly when you need to. So all of this is powered by the um, the dice section of System Builder, which you all have access to today. Um, if we go into my content universes, let's create a new one and we'll call it Devlog32. Very creative with the names today. And we're going to go for a custom system and name it Devlog32 Dice. And we'll create this. And I'm going to switch over to the System tab and go over to the Dice section here. And this is where you can create those custom dice like you saw in Coriolis with the custom faces for the dice, but that's not really what we're interested in here. Uh, this action tray up here is where you can create what shows up in that dice tray. Um, so we can create whatever we want here, uh, not just dice, but you could, you could make like a message action type. And 
and you could create a dice roll. Um, so when, when you're doing this, you can have simple dice rolls like 1d8. And you can also have complex dice rolls like, um, we'll say 1d20 plus 1d8, very complex, look out. And that's probably enough to show off for now. Um, so we'll go ahead and create a new game using that custom uh, dice system. What did I call that one again? I think I called it maybe custom dice. Yes, perfect. Oh wait, no, this is a different one. Let's go back. I think I know it's what I need to pick here. Devlog32, there we go. That's what I named my system. Okay, now that we're in here with the right system, we've got that set of actions that we had defined in the system. Um, so if for any other action type besides single line dice rolls and dice pools, you can just specify the number of times you want that action to run. So. Our message hey listen um, we could run that twice by just clicking it twice and that gets sent in twice you can combine these um, to do hey listen twice and 1d8 once um, getting really really wild here uh, so one difference to point out is if your your action only has a single row in the dice roll we're going to use that to pass in the number of dice that you want to roll here so this will be a 5d8 roll Whereas in this other one that we had d20 plus 1d8, we just run the action that many times. So this will run that whole action twice. We don't pass in the number of dice in this case. So you can do some really cool stuff with the dice tray now um, in conjunction with this week's feature to um, kind of build those pools or those cues of dice on the fly and send those out. So really excited to see what you all come up with on this one. So. Be sure to hop into our Discord and share your cool creations either in the system building channel or wherever you see fit. Um, we, we love to see the cool stuff that you all come up with. Speaking of dice pools, the dice pool action, the segmented dice pool action in particular, uh, got a little bit of an upgrade this week. I'm not going to dive into the details of it, but um, if you've been excited about Alien and the ability to roll uh, dice pools where the one particular segment might have zero dice based on the abilities and skills that feed into that pool, well, that's now possible. Um, so you can you can get get amped for alien and a few other systems that need that uh, sort of zero dice situation uh, in a in a pool segment. Um, but for for something like Coriolis, let's take a quick look at uh, something that's going on in here that I think is very exciting. Um, so as a reminder, Coriolis is on our marketplace this week, and it's very cool. Uh, let's take a look at one of these ships. So the Oryx standard model. And let's go ahead and play this character and take a look at its character sheet. Looks like a pretty cool alchemy character sheet. Um, but what I think is most exciting about this is we had our content ingestion team working on this to build this sheet out using Sheet Builder. So this is the first sheet out in the wild that's using our internal System Builder Sheets tools that we're going to give to you all eventually, once we have eaten our own dog food, as they say, uh, enough with this this type of thing to feel comfortable shipping it out into the wild. But um, we're starting to use it, and boy howdy, let me tell you, we've been doing a lot of sheet building this week. Um, we've got sheets going for all kinds of systems now, uh, and the, the dev team has hardly touched any of them, so that's been awesome. Um, but anyway, uh, I just wanted to to call out the, the awesome work that the team did on um, Coriolis ships and uh, how cool they look and the fact that they were all built using our drag and drop sheet builder tools. So something to get excited about for the future.
cool. Um, so what is coming next from us? Let's take a look at that roadmap. So new this week is, of course, the Dice Roll Builder, and most of the other things are behind the scenes. A lot of system builder work. Um, also coming up next, I'm going to be diving into um, GM trackers. That's a big one. We actually need for Coriolis in order to be able to track darkness points. Um, that's going to be a GM tracker. Uh, so the ability to um, use trackers just like you're used to on characters, on, on player characters and on non-player characters, we're going to be bringing that capability to GMs to track, you know, arbitrary things that they need to track, clocks, rounds, um, darkness points, anything, lots, lots of uh, utility there for the Game Master to, of course, be able to create trackers without having to attach those to an NPC. Um, so I'm, I'm jumping into that one next week. You can expect that uh, definitely next week. Um, unless, you know, things get real, real wild, uh, but I'll be, I'll be jumping straight into that. Um, and then after that, we're, uh, going to be diving into streamer mode again. Very excited to pick that one back up for like the 15th time. Um, but actually do it, uh, in for real and to completion this time around. So, um, get stoked for streamer mode stuff coming soon. Um, and we've got lots and lots of systems in flight. Uh, I mentioned earlier that the, the ingestion team, even our content team, um, everybody except the dev team really has been in here making sheets for all of these systems. Uh, I saw some really cool sheets in progress for Dragonbane, even Pathfinder, uh, earlier today and, um, Fallout, of course, we're, we're jamming on Fallout. Um, we're trying to get that one ready, uh, pretty soon. Um, but yeah, we've got all of these in progress with um, sheets being built and um, custom kind of logic being defined for some of them. Like Dragonbane has a little bit of a more complicated um, system for some of its skills that we need to handle uh, a little bit specially. So we're diving into those details and we're going to have a lot of these systems up and running soon. So you can expect those things coming from us next. All right. That's our roadmap update. Let's jump over to system builder previews. Okay, let's go into a new universe and take a look at what's new in system builder. I've already got my devlog32 universe going, so let's just jump into that one and jump into the system section. So we have a notion of draft or publish sheets now. Um, so if I go in here to manage my sheets, I can add a player character sheet. We're going to call it Untitled PC1. Very, a very um, creative name. And um, when I edit this sheet, I can do cool things with it. Let's drop a couple common things into here. I'm going to put a two column layout with my character name and concept at the top, as is the way. Um, and then I'm going to show you a cool new setting for um, the column, the two column layout. You can adjust how this two column split happens. So you can have it split one third kind of on the left, two thirds on the right, or 50 50 is the default, or we use this one a lot two-thirds on the left and one-third on the right. Um, so for something like a title and a subtitle over here, along with, say, a switch, you see this all throughout Alchemy um, to track different settings for things. That's now something that's totally possible within System Builder. Incrementer and, and decrementers as well, so a two-column split um, with the one-third on the right, as well as a title and subtitle, and a little number incrementer, decrementer, or a little number ticker that you can play with. We use that one uh, a lot in um, all of our all of our sheets throughout Alchemy. Um, so this sheet is not published. So as a system builder, I'm in here and I'm working on it and I can use it, but anyone who has access to this universe does not have access to it until I've gone in and actually published it. So as soon as I flip the switch on this one, now this is usable by 
other people who uh, are not the owners of this universe. They can come in and use it in a game to create player characters from that sheet or um, create pre-mades in the universe using this sheet, for example. Uh, and the same is true for non-player characters. You have that published and, and unpublished flag here. So a nice little, uh, nice little necessary safeguard, um, especially for us as we're building these sheets for systems that um, all of the Kickstarter backers have access to. Um, but we have these in various states of completion, so we definitely are making heavy use of that uh, published and unpublished uh, setting throughout. So what else is new here? Um, let's take a look. I think the attributes is new since last time, uh, or at least drastically changed. Um, so it's now an attributes list, sort of like what you're used to seeing in a lot of the Year Zero Engine games. Um, so you might have some attributes. We'll just go with some old standbys here. We'll just have four strength dex. Con and int here on our attribute row. Um, and those lay out like that now. Uh, you can choose whether or not those values are adjustable and so on. And then you can have additional attributes if you want a list of further attributes uh, down below. And you can choose whether those are editable or not. So you can add an attribute there. Oops, wrong button. Add an attribute there like this one for, you know, whatever. I don't know why you'd split it up that way, but it's your system. You do you. Do, uh, you do you. So things are coming along in System Builder land, uh, and there's lots of exciting new things that we're working on. I think that's all I will reveal for this week, but stay tuned for more systems using this stuff. Um, and we're honestly probably a while away from giving you all access to this stuff. Um, so don't, don't, uh, don't get your hopes up too much for seeing this anytime soon, but you will be reaping the benefits of it soon, because as you saw with Coriolis, we're already putting this into use, um, for the rest of the V1 systems to kind of crank these out, um, and get them out to you all. Um, yeah, really no ETA for when this will be in, in your hands, but we, we definitely want to get it there, uh, as soon as we can. Uh, okay, hope you enjoyed that little teaser of System Builder and the progress we've made there over the last couple of weeks, and expect more in every devlog. All right, let's jump over to Q&A. Okay, devlog 32, Q&A. Uh, we, we've got... Um, We've got a question here from Dayman. First up, could we have data stores that can be targeted? For instance, an armor store could be influenced by different areas, such as equipment adding a specific amount to the armor store. It would be great if these stores could be defined in one section of a character and filled in various areas. These stores could then be displayed on the token. This would allow for elements like health plus bonus, health, armor, or AC for games like 5e and other store values. It would simplify tasks like combining a health tracker with a bonus health tracker to display a small bubble on a token. Yes, so um, definitely to some extent we're building this into our sheet builder schemas. The the idea of of targeting uh, a specific sheet field is definitely you know necessary. Uh, you can see this today already with um, custom systems or even sheet builder systems um, targeting skills and abilities as sort of special data stores, if you will. Uh, but we do need the ability to sort of arbitrarily reference um, those sheet data stores anywhere. So that's coming for sure. We need that to, to some extent for every system that we're building. Um, and the second part of this, exposing those on a token is definitely something that we've played around with, um, an idea of sort of a token dashboard, if you will, when you click on a token Today, you see its name and you've got your little rotation button, um, but you can definitely imagine there being more controls there that you can play with, uh, and we're very excited about that. So exposing those on a token, I think, is a cool idea. We had thought of kind of just some static ones that might show up there, but I love the idea of being able to customize those. So we'll definitely put that into our, our internal 
task um, for the, the token dashboards um, and our, our data stores for different character uh, data. Uh, okay, so yeah, number two, could we have a set of songs for each scene? It would be beneficial to have one or two or more songs, especially during longer scenes. Um, yeah, so this one is very likely. This is actually where we started originally, way, way back before we even had an alpha out in the wild. Our very first um, version of scenes supported playlists um, already. Uh, and I was actually building our, our home games um, by hand. I was just like writing a JSON file for our playlist and dropping it into a database by hand. Like, yeah. Um, so. Anyway, uh, going down a little trip down memory lane there. Um, I, all that's to say, our schema actually already supports this. Uh, we just removed the ability along the way to simplify our scene structure. There's a lot of complications that come along with uh, having playlists, like trying to keep everybody synced on the same part of a playlist um, and, and other facets of how you control them. Uh, but I would say that this is very likely. Uh, it's, a, it's a big request that folks have asked for um, for today, I would say use multiple scenes where it makes sense. Um, but yeah, I think playlists are probably, uh, something that we'll revisit in the future after the V1 titles are done. Y'all are probably tired of hearing me say after V1, um, but you know, a mountain of work. Uh, thanks Damien. Universe organization from Josh V. Any organization enhancements coming for organizing our universe's assets, like folders to separate music, images, maps, etc. Uh, yeah, I would say eventually we definitely want more organization here. We need it ourselves. We've got universes with 4,000 assets and it's just, you know, kind of wild. Um, I will say for today, you can utilize the tags on things and then use your filter bars where they're present. Um, most of the universe tabs have a filter bar at the top and you can type in a tag name to filter that down. Um, so you can kind of treat those tags like folders and then you just have to do the work of of typing it in or selecting it from a drop down, um, but yeah, eventually after our V1 stuff is done, we we would like to revisit this um, unless we hit a wall with V1 content. Um, I think most of our content is in there. Almost all the V1 content has been created in terms of articles and assets, uh, so not likely to make those enhancements until after V1, but definitely. All right, one of our favorites, visual novel style NPCs. That's sort of how we refer to this feature internally. From Damien again, hey Damien. Uh, like others, I'm interested in creating a modal pop-up feature, but with a different twist. Specifically, a modal that can slide out from the left without a background. This would allow us to overlay something like an NPC over the existing background. For instance, imagine a scenario where players are at a bar conversing with the barkeep. Like an online anime, an image of the barkeep appears from the left side, overlaying the background image of the bar. As another NPC enters, their image also appears. I envision these images being managed in a GM section, along with players and overlays. While not an immediate need, this feature would certainly enhance the cinematic approach that Alchemy is striving for. Yeah, so we get this one um, not exactly this way. I think you've come up with a, a slightly more interesting interaction here than, one, than the ones that we've heard before. Um, I definitely like the idea of it kind of sliding out from a side. Um, I think a lot of our kind of internal prototypes and ideas have been more fading in or popping up. Um, but yeah, this is uh, something that we're very excited to build. It's one of our top feature requests. Uh, I think it is actually the most requested feature. Um, and I agree that it totally fits our cinematic sort of feel, the ability to really see that NPC more than just a tiny little kind of avatar on the right side. Um, or, you know, right click and view and have their kind of modal card pop up in the middle. Um, something a bit more immersive and cinematic is definitely needed. Um, again, I'm going to throw a, a hack out here. Um, you can, you can kind of do this with scenes today. If you put in a little bit of work with, you know, an image editing tool to build your background layer and then put your NPC over the top of it and maybe throw a little blur uh, behind the NPC, you can come up with a pretty convincing scene change to reveal um, your NPC, uh, but you know, that takes image editing work. Um, it would definitely be preferable if that was just built in. So that's that's definitely our destination here. Uh, but in the meantime, I always love creative scene hacks to get um, to get what we want today. So give that a whirl, but we will definitely take this feedback into consideration on that feature request internally. 
and we'll get to this one someday. Probably sooner than later. Awesome. Well, thanks for the questions all. And we've got more for next week, next episode, I should say. So we'll get into those then. All right, that's all for this episode. Um, oh, actually, before I go, um, we are, well, some of us anyway, some of the team is over in Boston at PAX East right now this weekend. If you're watching this live, what are you doing? Go out and enjoy the PAX stuff. But if you're in the Boston area and you didn't realize it, oh, PAX is happening. Um, we are in a booth there. I don't know which booth, but, you know, the information is is out there. We're by, um, on the other side of... Hitpoint Press and 1985 Games are nearby, so look for those fine folks and uh, find the Alchemy booth uh, nearby there and go get a demo, get some, some cool stuff, and talk to the folks that are there. So anyway, that's all for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, head on down below, press the like button, subscribe for future updates, get notified, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Let's go play some games.